Hi, my name is Nicolette Ocasio. I'm the sub team lead of the investments team. And so, um, <laughs> so the purpose of the investments team, no, it's fine. The purpose of the investments team is to um, establish connections with people in the industry and find a way to structure loans so that we can get potential um, loans and grants for Agua Clara to build more plants around the world. So going through our table of contents, we've structured this presentation, how we did our um, pitch book, which is the main project we worked on in this second half of the semester. So we'll run through a little bit of introduction and background, then move on to the problem and how the Agua Clara plants work, then competitive advantages, um, the market, some financials, our feasibility studies, and our risk and risks and mitigates, followed by our next steps as a team. So we'll start off with the introduction. So we like to start off with this slide um, when we present during the symposiums. So we're talking um, here about taking patient capital combined with Agua Clara technology and community support to deliver clean water access. So um, the patient capital in this case would be the investors that we're looking to partner with. So um, impact investors that are willing to accept a lower interest rate and a longer return period because they care about the social benefits that um, a project like Agua Clara um, supports. And then Agua Clara Technology, which is the research that we do here in combination with the community support. So the people in Honduras, APP, and all the people on the ground. So a little overview of impact investing. We're talking about taking um, organizations or partnering with organizations that want to provide this social benefit, um, linking them with private investors that want to generate returns that um, create positive social impact and then increase the scale. So as Agua Clara does, we would like to continue building more plants. And so right now we're at the stage where we're trying to, con to connect the um, communities in Honduras with investors who want to support um, the mission to bring clean water to these areas of the world. So now I'm going to pass it on to Cindy to talk about a little bit of the background and the problem and how the um, Agua Clara plants work. Thanks, Nicolette. So I'm here to provide a bit of the background. So. Um, in 2005, Dr. Monroe Weber Shirk founded Agua Clara as a research based program at Cornell University with the goals to uh, providing clean, drinkable water access with, that can last for decades, as, as well as operate at a low cost and be built based on the limited resources of the community's um, availability. Um, from there, we developed a partnership with Agua Para El Pueblo, a local Honduran non-governmental organization that helps to build our water plants. Uh, there has been a total of 14 water plants in Honduras built so far, along with that serves a population of 65,000 people. In 2017, Agua Clara Reach was founded as a nonprofit organization that helps to expand on the successes of Agua Clara, and they hope to bring uh, clean water on tap to communities around the world. Next, I'll be delving into the problem that Agua Clara hopes to solve, as well as how the plant works. So water is a basic necessity and is an important resource for sustaining life. It's important as a decrease in water quality can not only spread diseases and cause waterborne illnesses and ep epidemics, but uh, an increase in water uh, sanitation and quality can help, especially among mortality rates and increase literacy rates as well as education ability and um, uh, as well as uh, retaining information. In 1990, uh, the um, United Nations developed a series of eight millennium de development goals, one of which was to half the uh, amount of people that had, uh, did not have access to clean, drinkable water. Since uh, this uh, goal was reached in 2000, 
this goal was reached in 2010. However, there's still a lot of improvements to be made as there's a great discrepancy between those in the rural areas and urban areas as to who has accessible, uh, sustainable, clean drinking water. Uh, additionally, the second challenge is that while the accessibility to drinking water has been increased, there is um, a discrepancy between uh, how clean the drinking water actually is. Next we'll have a de oh, um, Now I'll be talking about the uh, Agua Clara water treatment plant. So there are five different stages to the water treatment removal process including grit removal, chemical dose, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration. I won't be going very deeply into each of these processes, however, I will highlight that there are three main key factors uh, to Agua Clara's innovation, uh, which include one, that the plant is gravity powered, meaning that it does not require electricity for these plants to run. Secondly, the uh, materials to build these plants are all locally available, meaning that these countries don't have to outsource and uh, get materials from other countries. Um, and thirdly, the, uh, uh, the water treatment uh, technology is easily accessible. Uh, these countries simply have to input the flow rate of the water and the dimensions of the materials that they're working with in order to get a detailed documentation of how to construct these plants. Next, um, I'll bring on Aditi, and she will be talking about the competitive, the competition and advantages of Agua Clara. Thank you, Cindy. So we'd like to talk about next three main sources of, of competition that the investments team has identified. Um, the first is Water Missions International. Um, so this is a company that is a global-based organization and provides a lot of the same technologies that Agua Clara does in terms of its plants. Um, so for example, it offers backwash filters and has a complete filtration and chemical disinfection package um, that goes into their technologies. In addition, it's a very cost-effective solution, so it does compete in the similar cost structure that Agua Clara plants do as well. The second competitor that we've identified is Charity Water. So once again, this is a global organization that currently serves 9 million people worldwide, um, and they operate with a local partnership model similar to how Agua Clara serves its communities in Honduras. Um, and they also have gravity-powered solutions similar, again, to Agua Clara technologies. Um, and the final co uh, competitor that we've identified is Pure Water for the World. Um, this is an organization that offers no moving parts as part of their uh, water treatment plants um, and no external power or sunlight is required for these plants to operate. So it's similar in vain to Agua Clara's very environmentally friendly and gravity powered um, water treatment plants. Um, though Agua Clara has some competitors in this space, none of these competitors offers every single um, advantage that our technologies do. Um, so Cindy highlighted a couple of these previously, but I'd like to talk about a few more. Um, so all of Agua Clara's plants are able to be managed by a single operator, especially in Honduras. Um, and this is critical because these operators don't necessarily need to have um, a formal education in water treatment or engineering, um, but the technology is simple and transparent enough for them to upkeep all of the plants. Um, secondly, the Agua Clara technology and the water that results um, meets um, the World Health Organization and Honduran standards for clean drinking water. Um, and in addition, it exceeds the UN's definition of an improved source of water. So Agua Clara is definitely making headway there. And finally, we have a low cost um, solution to offer these communities that we work with. Um, and this is all of our plants are cheaper than traditional mechani mechanized um, water treatment solutions. Um, and our technologies come in at about two to four US dollars per household per day. So this is definitely a, another space that Agua Clara competes in. Um, next, I'd like to pass it on to Jenny, who will talk more about the market for Agua Clara technologies in Honduras and other parts of the world. Thank you, Aditi. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about Agua Clara's current market, which is Honduras. So Honduras is the second poorest country in Central America, with nearly 65% of its population living below the poverty line. And in addition to this, there currently exists coverage gaps in water sanitation and water supply, especially within 
the rural communities in this area. And according to a recent study by the World Health Organization, as of 2017, only one third of water treatment systems provide continual service in these rural areas. And of these water systems, less than 14% of them transport disinfected water. And a more recent study also found that of 43 water systems in these rural areas, 70% continue to produce water that has excessive coliform counts. And so because Agua Clara technology focuses on communities with adequate surface running water but inadequate treatment systems, it's clear that this technology is well poised to solve this problem within Honduras. And I will now be passing it on to Kristen to talk more about Agua Clara's financial model. Thanks, Jenny. Um, so basically our financial model serves as kind of like a framework to determine our actual loan terms when we approach investors. So when we do this, we look at different factors. So first we look at the actual um, construction costs of the plant, as well as the interest rates that um, investors require or want. And then we pair that with other factors such as leverage rates, which is the percentage of the construction costs that will be paid for by a grant versus a loan, because a loan, the community would have to um, pay for that. And then we'd also look at delinquency rates, which is the percentage of delinquent payments or community members that do not pay their tariff. Um, and thus we would look at these factors and the financial model would create a tariff um, that community members would have to pay in order to fulfill this loan. Um, we would not just look at the tariff, but also look at the community's ability to pay and kind of negotiate with investors to see if there is um, a possible loan structure that would give investors the, their desired rate of return while also being at a point where community members are actually able to pay for it. Another thing that the financial model does is that it visualizes payment schedules. So if we look at the debt service schedule, um, basically this shows how much money is actually being paid to investors. If you look at the total semi-annual column, that is the semi-annual payment given to investors, and this money would be funneled towards paying back interest payments, but also paying back the principal or basically the money that we were loaned. Lastly, the financial model also details the cash flows and the accounts that it goes through. So basically, if we look at construction payments, uh, money is being funneled into there to pay for the actual construction costs around month seven um, because the plant is actually operating there are now revenues from water tariffs and that revenue would then transfer into the debt service account which is basically to pay back the debt and also transfer into the operating expenses account paying for different operating expenses of the plant and every year there will also be payments and cash flowing towards the maintenance reserves count account um, in case there are other maintenance costs that will be incurred. Um, now I'll pass it back to Cindy for the feasibility study. Thanks, Kristen. So as Alclar hopes to expand its technology and bring these treatment plants to new areas and regions, the team has decided to conduct a geographical feasibility study to discuss and determine the viability of bringing these to these plants to countries including uh, Colombia and Ecuador. In this study, we've provided information about the profile of each country, including the population and the geographical location, as well as the climate. Uh, as, and then secondly, the water treatment need of each country, as well as the problems that each country faces in terms of clean water access. Um, the first country that I'll be discussing is Ecuador. So Ecuador is, uh, uh, occupies half of the Andes Mountains as well as the Amazon Basin. Uh, the economy is mainly agricultural based. In terms of its water treatment need, uh, Ecuador is one of the uh, most rich uh, country that uh, freshwater rich countries in the world with uh, around 2,000 rivers and streams. However, uh, only the people that have money are able to access clean water in this area. Finally, in terms of problems that Ecuador is facing, um, 
a lot, there's a lot of loss uh, through the irrigation systems in terms of clean water access. However, there are also problems within the government in terms of opacity of uh, information that is being transferred between um, the, uh, the uh, municipality as well uh, in, um, yeah. Um, and then uh, now I'll be bringing on Nicolette to discuss the uh, Colombia and what we found about that country. Thank you, Cindy. So in Colombia, we found that there's actually a wide variety of different climates. Um, so that makes bringing Agua Clara technology um, into the region a little bit more difficult. And there's also a stark difference between the amount of urban and rural population that have access to clean water. So their economy is based on the extraction of a lot of non-renewable um, resources. So that will create some issues for the country. Um, and in terms of resource need, They've built, recently built a wastewater plant with the purpose of serving over 3 million people, but the government has focused a lot of their attention on keeping oil prices low. Um, like I said before, their economy was based on the extraction of non-renewable resources, and that has created a barrier to creating um, systems for water, clean water distribution. And again, different water boards have um, different responsibilities and interests. And a lot of times these can conf conflict, especially with the need to keep oil prices down. Um, and many of the river basins support the majority of these uh, water systems, but that is only contained to 13% of the country's actually available water supply that can be distributed, cleaned, and then distributed to the Colombian population. Now I'm gonna pass it on to Maria Cristina for the risks and mitigants. Thank you very much, Nicolette. So in the process of assessing Aqua Clara's long-run viability as an investment, we also decided to look at some risks and potential solutions that can mitigate the effects of those risks. Um, and one of these risks arise from assumptions that we have made in, within our financial model. Particularly, um, the first one has to do with uh, uh, the assumption that the average ha Honduran household income per month is uh, $250, given that they work 20 days uh, per month. So, um, but we are questioning this assumption in terms of uh, whether income shocks that happen due to droughts or other extreme weather phenomena. And the way that we decided to mitigate this is by looking at how we can create an error margin, a, a range um, of uh, how the monthly income can fluctuate. And uh, this it has to do with 1% uh, or 3% change in income um, in case of um, uh, this income shock. Also, on the other hand, Honduras have an excellent record of uh, paying back the tariff, which is uh, $2.90. Um, and uh, because it, uh, they have the willingness and ability to understand how important uh, clean drinking water is for them. Uh, and simultaneously, they will be able to pay back the tariff, even uh, with the income shock, because uh, we can cooperate with uh, the government uh, and ask them to provide uh, the villagers with uh, cross subsidies or uh, vouchers in order to still have the ability to pay up uh, their monthly expenditures for the tariff and for other very significant uh, um, uh, needs, uh, consumption needs. Um, this, a second risk that we have identified is increasing capital costs of operations and maintenance for the water treatment plants. Um, but uh, we do not uh, worry and we're confident that uh, we'll be able to mitigate those costs because uh, our costs are already much lower than our competitors um, and uh, the locals make uh, uh, monthly in-kind contributions in terms of tools, uh, manufacturing materials such as hydraulic pumps um, that help us uh, construct uh, um, the um, plants. And um, lastly, we mitigate this problem by our debt financing uh, model, um, we, the, which allows us to have a network of uh, Cornell alumni, alumni who um, 
uh, have uh, uh, programs of social impact within the um, Central American region and uh, can help us um, and can lend to the uh, communities there. Um, the last risk is uh, has to do with conflicts of interest that arise uh, with the water boards, uh, as Nicolette mentioned. Um, and uh, particularly when uh, water boards have political aspirations, then uh, they might refuse uh, to raise tariffs or uh, certain com or certain communities uh, will uh, not understand uh, why it is important to pay about to pay the tariff. Um, so the way that we mitigate this problem is uh, we send uh, every summer representatives who are fluent in uh, Spanish to train the water boards and ensure uh, constant cooperation. Uh, there is a lot of informational exchange in order to um, mitigate informational asymmetries and lastly information sessions and email exchanges in order to make sure that um, villagers understand the importance of paying back the tariff and i will pass it back to nicolette so that she can talk about um, the future goals uh, and tasks that we're going to do thank you thank you so um lastly i'm just going to touch on um, some future work. So with half the team graduating, we're leaving three main tasks for the um, remaining members on the team and the new people that we bring on. So firstly, we've seen that Agua Clara Reach is having a more um, involved place in our team. And so we wanna establish more strong connections because we feel like there can be some people that can give us a lot of great guidance and contacts. Secondly, we hope to gather feedback from people who go to Honduras this summer about the accounting needs of the communities to ensure that we're making um, robust accounting practices in place in the plants. And thirdly, we want to continue reaching out to investors with the with the pitch book that we worked on this past semester that we've just um, ran you through. So um, if anyone has questions, feel free to reach out to any of us here. Um, our contact information is there. Thank you.